Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Good morning, Stephanie. Malcolm Ness, as seen on CNN this morning. That's right. 10 out of 10, room <laughs> raider. <laughs> um, Malcolm, I, I I mentioned this story already earlier, but I, this is why I'm wearing my Ukraine uh, t-shirt for you, for democracy. I this story has your name written all i don't know if you saw this so rfk jr is on fox news doing a town hall with sean hannity uh he once again blamed the united states for russia's invasion of ukraine uh this time in front of a fox news audience that cheered his remarks (laughs) he said nato's expansion after the cold war prompted russia to become increasingly defensive and ultimately hostile uh he urged joe biden to uh broker a peace deal to end the war um, Sean Hannity said, so to appease Putin, who I think is evil, they've already given up Crimea. It was annexed. So what? They have to give up the Donbass area? Uh, Kennedy said, Ukraine, because of our pushing Ukraine into the war on two occasions, uh, Hannity said, we pushed them into it or did Putin invade? Kennedy said, we don't want peace. We want war with Russia. A substantial portion of the audience cheered. Hannity said, why are you blaming America's role in this? Oh my God, this is the worst thing that's happened in the Trump era is I agree with Ew. everything Sean Hannity right. said. <laughs> what is happening? Oh my God, can you explain that whole thing to us? <laughs> I've, ma- I've made Let's Malcolm Nance speechless. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Robert F. Kennedy is mentally ill. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's got a lot, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Yes. Has got a lot of issues going on here. Uh, he was recruited by Steve Bannon and Roger Stone. Done. That's all. Hakeem Jeffrey said he's a walking he's a walking false flag operation. I mean, he is a false flag operation. How he can even say that he's a Democrat? Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys saw on the uh, on Twitter yesterday. Somebody posted up a Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Tulsi Gabbard ticket. Oh, yes. I, oh, yeah. Of uh, of of people who are supposed to come in and spoil for the Democrats to get those extremist far left Bernie voters, uh, most of whom would have voted who voted for Trump anyway, Mm -hmm. twice. So I don't know what he was on about, because I know the history of this. I've lived part of the history of this. Some of the things that were not mentioned in there, like the facilitation of taking Crimea was assisted by a consultant called Paul Manafort. All right. Yep. Donald Trump's campaign manager later. They all worked for Putin. In my first book, The Plot to Hack America, we, you know, I called these guys the Kremlin crew. Yeah. And it, it was absolutely amazing that it was so easy to call before the 2016 election that all of them were working in Russia's interest, including Donald Trump. The United the Ukraine didn't invade anything. Ukraine was invaded right. twice yeah. now. And for Robert F. Kennedy to say, well, America starts and America loves war. And he's talking to a Fox News audience that loves it, that supposedly at the same time loves the armed forces with all of their heart. These are the same people who cheer killing cops and taking over the Capitol, destroying the Capitol Hill police force and just, you know, defunding the FBI and the Department of Justice and then say, we back the blue. These people are walking, talking hypocrites. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is now the good liberal that they like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did I mention liberal? Get that word out of my mouth. That guy is a Republican plant. Yeah. It's designed to take away votes from Donald from uh, Joe Biden. But I really think he's going to take away votes from Donald Trump because they love him so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, speaking of around the world, you retweeted um, intellectualist who said Netanyahu has done more damage to Israel than any external enemy ever could dream of. He has destroyed Israel's tenuous social ecosystem for power. I, you know, I was saying that Rachel Maddow did a, a great you know, piece on this that, you know, yes, autocracy is sprouting up around the world. But the, the other big story is the resistance to it. If you look at what's happening there, you know, and we always have to remember that's what you get shouty about, <laughs> is yeah. turning out and voting about democracy you know, everywhere. I, I was on uh, public radio here in, in New York State on Monday, where I, I do a two-hour radio show, and um, and I talked about it. I always say full disclosure. I was raised in an Orthodox Jewish neighborhood in Philadelphia, almost married an Israeli. 
uh, you know, lived in Israel, been to Israel. And what I see is a completely different country now. I see a country that because they don't have a constitution, they have literally dis started to dismantle yeah. for the religious bodies who don't serve in the armed forces, uh, you know, the, the, the extreme ultra-Orthodox who essentially are turning Israel into a micro-theocracy. Mm -hmm. Now, don't quote me for that. Quote the Israelis. There are hundreds of thousands of people who have been turning out almost every day to protest the dismantling of the independent judiciary, the dismantling of coalitions that could, uh, you know, bring Israel back to its moderate roots. Two things in my reckoning of this really uh, lent a hand to that. One, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, Russian Jews started emigrating from Russia without any regard to their to their background. And it militantized a lot of the Israeli politics. Uh, one of the first terrorist acts that I thought that I was around uh, was a hand grenade attack in Ash Ashdod, which we thought was a terrorist attack. And it turns out Russian mafia gangs had just moved into town that week yeah. and were setting their pace by throwing hand grenades into other discotheques. And from that point onward, we saw this slide and then the rise of the ultra right wing uh, religious uh, extremists in Israel. Yeah. who have now decided to turn Israel into a, you know, uh, a, an apartheid state. I'm sorry yeah. to say it, but well, it, that's what's happening. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's talk about the resistance to it. I mean, it's, let's talk about happier domestic news, and that is Donald Trump being arrested again this week. <laughs> Any time oh, now. Gosh. <laughs> um, you know, there's a, a lot of developments. I'm wondering, you know, what you think are most significant, but clearly they're looking at this whole plot, right? Not only are the governors, you know, have, you know, that have, uh, by state by state been uh, interviewed by Jack Smith, but also, you know, Chris Krebs, uh, obviously these election security that he's been told, he was told multiple, multiple times this election was the most secure in our history. There was no fraud, blah, blah, blah. Um, how are you feeling about everything you've heard on the J6 case? Well, and this is where I'm going to get a little cautious for you. Okay. Okay. Because oh. I always say when we get these warm, fuzzy feelings, that's about where trouble begins. There was a brilliant piece, in, I, I believe it was in the New York Times, about the, tr the Trump future, Israel's transition into away from a democracy towards authoritarianism and fascism, is a glimpse into a Trumpian future of America. If we screw up, yes, there is a resistance to the rise of global fascism. Yes, there is a resistance, uh, in, certainly in Israel, which has great history as a, the only democracy in the Middle East. Now apply that, what you're seeing there, to the United States where the leader doesn't care about your laws. The leader doesn't care about the courts unless they rubber stamp what he says. The leader doesn't care that 100,000 of you protest out there. This is why we are so concerned for our sister state Israel, because it is a future template for the United States. Should mm -hmm. Trump not get into power, get remotely close to power. Yeah. His allies already are bringing this about. Our resistance has to ramp up to Israel level, to where people are, don't come out once. Remember the last major march we had, yeah. January 2017? We yeah. don't do that. We don't protest. Yes, we are starting to turn out the vote. But now we have to really bring the global or, or the American wing of the resistance to fascism to its great fruition come up 2024. You may have a guy who is literally a convicted felon, all right, who technically might not be able to vote in his own election because felons yeah. can't vote in Florida uh, and come back as president of the United States. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was saying, and also everything you wrote about in your first book, I was saying it's all the wild cards, you know, the Joe Manchins, the no labels, the RFK, the, you know, and I said, you know, Russia's going to back him. It's everything you wrote about, just fill in the names, you know, with Bernie, Jill Stein, whatever, just change the names up, you know, in terms yeah, of third you. party runs, I, God knows yeah. whatever factors, AI, throw that in there. Yeah. Right. Well, in my last book, They Want to Kill Americans. I'm telling you, I am shocked that that book, everything in it, is coming around again. We are seeing them, uh, the Republican Party, now completely embrace the
the people who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. So we yeah. are seeing a lot more chat chatter about getting more guns and getting more ammunition on the right wing extremist world. By the way, we are seeing a lot more talk. Through Peter Navarro, I don't know if you're going to bring yeah, that up. Yeah, talking talk about, about civil war. Civil war. Yeah. Now saying it <laughs> openly. By the way, the best with- meme I saw was the, uh, you know, Jason Aldean lyrics about, you know, spit in a cop's face, desecrate the flag, try that in a small town. And it's like uh, images of January 6th. That's right. exactly right. what they did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they tried that in a big that- town. And oh. guess what? They're going to prison. They should play that video, the song over the video of January 6th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. They tried it in a small town. Washington, D.C. is half a million people. Less population than the North Dakota, South Dakota, or any of those other states out there, and they sought to overthrow the government of the United States, and they're proud of it. They're proud of it. And again, if we don't pay attention, the good things that do happen. Trump gets indicted for the third time this week. Doesn't matter. This is how Netanyahu has kept himself out of trouble. He is the longest-running leader in Israel because he changes the laws. He changes the rules. He gets coalition of people who will get rid of the laws for him. Yeah. Donald Trump is banking on this. Yep. And once again, we're at the point where we have to say the 2024 election may be the election that decides whether the United States exists as a democratic republic again. Chris, you're going to have to ride those decibel levels as Shouty McShouterson oh. gets closer to the 2024 election. because. Uh. I know. Yes, it's I'm prepared. <laughs> I'm prepared. <laughs> All right. Love you, Malcolm Nance. <laughs> and uh, Substack. Substack and uh, Black Man Spy, the podcast. We've linked to everything at yes. stephaniemiller.com. Love you, honey. See you, sailor. Bye.